In this example, we want to use the sum and difference identity for cosine to determine the exact trig function value of cosine 13 pi over 12 radians. The first step in this type of problem is to determine what two angles can we add or subtract which will equal 13 pi over 12 radians that have known function values. Angles that have known function values are the angles that we see when we use a unit circle to determine function values meaning angles that are multiples of 30 degrees, like 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on, or multiples of 45 degrees. And it's much easier to determine what two angles to add or subtract if we first convert this two degrees. So let's start by doing that. So multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi, so the pi's simplify out, 12 and 180 simplify. There's one 12 and 12 and 15 12's and 180. So 13 times 15 degrees is equal to 195 degrees. So we want to determine two angles with known function values that have a sum or difference of 195 degrees. The good news is there's often more than one way to obtain this angle. For example, we could use 150 degrees plus 45 degrees, but we could also use 240 degrees minus 45 degrees. It doesn't matter which of these we use, the result will be the same. But we couldn't use something like 160 degrees plus 35 degrees because 35 degrees does not have a known function value. So let's go ahead and use this first sum. So if we start to write this out, cosine of 195 degrees is equal to cosine of 150 degrees plus 45 degrees. So if we stop here for a moment, this tells us that A is equal to 150 degrees and B is equal to 45 degrees. So we'll substitute 150 degrees here and here and we'll substitute 45 degrees here and here. And the last thing to mention here is we used a sum of two angles, which is the top operation here. So we have to use the top operation here, which is subtraction. So applying this identity, we'll have cosine 150 degrees times cosine 45 degrees minus sine 150 degrees times sine 45 degrees. Now we can use a unit circle or we can sketch reference triangles to evaluate these trig functions. Let's go ahead and sketch our reference triangles. So for 45 degrees it would be here, therefore our reference triangle would be here. So we'd have one, one, square root two. And then for 150 degrees, we'll be over here in the second quadrant where the reference angle will be 30 degrees. So if it's in the second quadrant, We'd label this one, two, and this would be negative square root three. Okay, so the cosine of 150 degrees would be negative square root three over two. Cosine 45 degrees would be one divided by square root two, and if you rationalize that, it would be square root two over two, minus the sine of 150 degrees would be one half and the sine of 45 degrees is equal to the cosine of 45 degrees because of the isosceles triangle, so this would be square root two over two. So we're gonna have negative square root six minus square root two divided by four. And there's one more thing I wanna mention. Some textbooks will write this in a different form. We know we could factor out a negative or negative one in the numerator, And then sometimes what you'll see is if the negative is out front of the fraction bar, making the entire fraction negative, we can also write it like this. So all three of these are equivalent based upon the style of the textbook. And we'll go ahead and stop here.